the BT Fighter, this is a fun knife. Uh, I mean, you could tell just, just by looking at it, you know that this is gonna be a good time. But unfortunately, my example has, it has one issue and I was absolutely heartbroken to find it because I was so looking forward to this knife. But unfortunately, I can't keep it. Hey, how you doing? My name is Jay. If this is your first time here, welcome to my channel. Now, consider clicking on that subscribe button if you're looking for knife reviews that get right to the point. Now you should be looking at some specs. Now these are measurements I did take myself. So you can either pause and read them here or follow along throughout this review because I will have them down in the uh, description below. And we'll quickly go ahead and take care of these size comparisons and we'll, we'll start out with a couple of rats, the one and the two. And here's a couple of Benchmades with the, uh, the big and the little Griptilian. And finally a couple spider Spydercos with the uh, PM2 and Para 3. And just in case you didn't know, now the, the, the BT portion of it uh, stands for uh, Brian Tai, who's the designer of this knife and a, another very popular CRKT model, the TyTac 2. The BT Fighter, it has a lot going for it. Well, like the blade. I mean, at under three inches, I mean, you can pretty much carry this wherever without being considered a criminal. And it, not to mention, that is just such a good looking drop point. I mean, I have, I have one other knife with this kind of like, you see the thumb ramp up at the top that kind of looks like a ledge. I have one other knife that, uh, with that same kind of blade design and that being the Southern Grind Spider Monkey. And check out, now check out that, that blade spine. Look at how far, you see how this, like the thickness, it kind of continues all throughout and then it doesn't start to taper until you're like almost at this tip. So yeah, needless to say, I think that tip looks like it can uh, handle some work. We have some very nice, like oversized, look at the size of those, some oversized thumb studs that they should be you know, really easy to, uh, to use with gloves on. And same goes for that button lock, easy to get at as well. Just by looking at that flipper positioning, I mean, you know that the deployment is gonna be effortless and it totally is. I mean, there's even, check this out, there's even like a little landing spot for like your index finger where they removed some of the handle material. Just a really nice attention to detail. I mean, let's be honest here. The, you know, the action and that button lock, those are the main attractions here. I mean, that's, that's really the star of the show. And the ball bearing pivot with all of those deployment options make this an absolute like fidget dream you will not be able to put this down it's that much fun when closed i want to show you the that blade retention is really really good because yeah you can see i'm not able to uh to shake it loose and let's check the centering oh yeah that's pretty good it's not perfect but it is very very close i'm usually i'm usually pretty conservative when it comes to like well handle designs. I mean, simple usually just works for me, but I really like the overall look of these uh, GFN scales. And you see that it's got like this, it's like a layered or like a stepped kind of pattern. And I can't really tell. I know, I mean, this looks like carbon fiber, but I can't really tell if it's a, if it's a sticker or if it's just or if this is just simply the uh, GFN material that's just made to look like carbon fiber. Whatever it is, the traction, very good. With my medium sized hand, now I can just fit all four of my fingers, but notice uh, it's, it's, it's a little cramped. I mean, if you have, if you have larger hands than I, uh, this, is, this is gonna be a problem, but there is actually, there's a larger version of this knife. I like how each end of the handle, I like how that kind of like uh, flares out because what that does for me anyway, is it really does kind of just lock my hand 
in place. And now if you're one of those with larger hands and you're thinking, oh, no big deal, Jay, I'll just go ahead and, you know, I'll, I'll uh, choke up. No, unfortunately, you're not able to do that because this is definitely not a uh, finger choil. It's way too small. I get that they were trying to improve the, you know, the traction in your hand with this, with this back spacer. But if you look at all of these raised bumps, like on the spine, it's kind of annoying. And for, I know it's kind of a stupid reason, but it's still something I want to point out because this knife, it, it won't stand up on like a flat surface. Yeah, I know it's dumb, but just something I wanted to mention. At first glance now, this, this deep carry pocket clip, now it looks like it's gonna be just the only one position, but in fact, it is, it's not. What you would do is, so like, let's say if you were a lefty like me, take off, you would remove both of these screws, and then you would actually just totally flip the pocket clip over yeah, and then you'd be able to attach it here on the other side. And in case you're wondering, no, this ball does not, it does not spin. I gotta say though, I really, I do appreciate that CRKT just like slap on some kind of like generic clip, but with like khakis and this pocket clip, I mean, it slides in and out of the pocket pretty easily. If you have like thicker pocket material like jeans, uh, forget it because there's there's just not enough clearance there. And not to mention, there really isn't any, there's no give with this uh, steel of the pocket clip. I mean, none. After we go ahead and weigh this, and then I'm gonna do a couple quick cuts on some cardboard. I'll show you why I may not keep this. And then we will uh, talk about the price. The fit and finish here, I really think that it could have been a little bit better. And, and I want to show you what I mean now. Sorry about the light, but you can see with this flashlight, as I go ahead and shine it through, you can clearly see that there are just, yeah, there's several gaps between like the scales and, and backspacer. This does have nested liners and uh, they are steel, but there's no like, there's no like skeletonization going on in an effort to keep that weight down. I don't think it would really matter much here because we're only looking at about 3.3.4 ounces, which is going to be what close to one, two, three, four, about four double A batteries or yeah, almost the same weight as the uh, pair of three. Now I know that this thing is a blast to fidget with, but sometimes we forget that, you know, it's, it's, it's a tool first and it's made to, to cut stuff. So I want to go ahead and see how well this uh, 3.25 millimeter thick blade, let's see how well she cuts. Um, hmm. Uh, not very well. No. I mean, it's okay. Hold on. Let me do it just a couple more. I got to see for myself. No, it's okay. Um, yeah, that's a little rough. Uh, the, the cutting definitely, it could be better. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and show you. This is, uh, this is well, <laughs> this is my issue, my biggest issue uh, with the BT fighter. So I brought you in really close so you can see. Now notice, okay, so this is in the closed position. And then now focus on that tip of the blade, if you can see that there. Yep. You see how that's moving around? And then let me, I'm gonna hold it up to the microphone. Can you hear that? That's just me shaking it. So you can definitely feel, oh yeah, you can definitely feel that, that, that play in there. So if, if I do, oh boy. This is tough because if I if I decide to go ahead and send this back, 
man, do I, I really, I really hate to send back something that you just get. You know what that's like? Uh, you know, if I do send this back, I will, what I'll do is there will be a link up in the corner because I will have then created a video about, you know, sending it back, how the return experience went, and if the issue was resolved. So you'll know that I sent it back because I'll make a follow-up video and you'll see a link up in the corner. If you determine like whether or not the price of a knife is fair, like based on the materials alone, then you will consider this to be overpriced at $45 because of the GFN handle and 8CR13 MOV blade steel. I, I don't have a problem with the price. Let me rephrase that. If this didn't have the issues that we, we talked about, I don't have a problem with the price. I mean, at no point, you know, when I was ordering this, did I feel like I was getting ripped off. I mean, no, the blade steel, uh, it doesn't really excite me, but you know what? At least it's going to be super easy to touch up. If you're only looking for a knife to, to fidget, oh man, then yeah, absolutely. Because that is the one thing that this knife does very well. But if the issues that, that I had pointed out earlier, if those are deal breakers for you, then, well, you know, you might want to pass on this or at least like maybe wait until like a, a later batch because then maybe some of those problems will have been fixed because I really do, I really think that this, this knife does have just a ton of potential. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you got, I mean, any value from it, do me a favor and let me know by leaving one of these. And don't forget to click on subscribe. Hey, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video. Hey, you guys, take care. I'll see you later.